where the girls were attacked, villagers catch a massive crocodile. They hope it's the killer. All night long, they struggle to haul it back to the village. It's alive. It still wants to fight. It's clearly an exceptional animal. But the real question is, have they just caught the largest croc on record? And will that finally bring an end to two years of terror? The Agusan Marsh lies on the island of Mindanao in the southern Philippines. It's an almost pristine wetland the size of the city of Chicago. At the southern end lies Lake Mihaba. The enormous network of lakes, rivers, and marshland is an ideal habitat for crocodiles. People live here for the same reason as the crocs. The fishing is good. Some build their houses floating right on the water. Others live in stilt houses dotted around the marsh. In the rainy season, the water level can rise by four meters. It seems idyllic, but something strange has happened. For two years, this water has brought misery and terror. A massive crocodile stalked the villagers. It ripped their precious water buffalo to shreds before their eyes. Attacked one fisherman and his son. And snatched another man from his boat to eat him alive. But it all started with the attack on the schoolgirls on Lake Mihaba in the heart of the marsh. Echo Rodrigo are heading home from school. Fisherman Roy Degas follows right behind. None of them knows that they're being watched by a crocodile about to start a killing spree. Sitting up front, Rowena never sees it coming. Roy saves Etchel from what looks like a monstrous crocodile. But Rowena is decapitated. Seeing her head in the crocodile's mouth was disgusting. Later on, we found her body covered with banana leaves. It was really smelling bad. Ronaldo de Gas is fishing with his son at their favorite spot in the marsh, right in the beast's lair. Fishing from the low-sided canoe, they're sitting ducks when the monster croc attacks. Then it hit the side of the boat. It was very close. They fell to the back to save him. Ronaldo cheats death, one of the few who lived to tell the tale. 
Pasalamat po ako sa Lord. Ha? I thank the Lord for saving me that night. Or I would have been dead me. At siya ba? Hindi ko na nangyayon. Just down the river from Lake Mihaba lies the village of San Marcos. Population 1,075. The village has no electricity or running water. It's the main base for the bonobo, including people who live in floating houses and retreat here in the rainy season. Rudy Ayala is the chieftain of this area. The biggest threat to crocodiles here is the growing number of people moving into the crocodile's territory, competing with them for food and space. Competition for fish in the lake could be causing the big crop to seek out new food. In San Marcos, it's found a ready supply. The people throw their garbage, including animal carcasses, in the water. The crocodile has been spotted in the river that runs through the village. Rudy lays down the law. The advice is simple. Don't lure the crocodile into the village with easy meals. It seems to work. There are no further attacks near San Marcos. Instead, the crocodile sets off in a different direction. It's been spotted five kilometers south of Lake Mihawa, and it's about to kill again. Nueva Era is a remote village set back from the marsh. The small stream that flows through it is the sole source of water for 1,300 residents. A 15-meter wooden bridge is the only safe crossing, especially now that the croc is in their creek. It's a long way from home, having swum through a network of rivers and creeks to reach the village from Lake Mihaba. Local farmer Daniel Oxtero has already worked a full day on the land. After dinner, he has to go out fishing, working a double shift to feed a wife and seven children. He doesn't go far. Fishing near the bridge, he's within earshot of his younger sister. Daisy's house overlooks the creek. Even though it was dangerous to be on the creek at night, Daniel had to go fishing so he could buy rice the next day and feed his family. Without knowing it, Daisy hears her brother's final moments. The night that Daniel disappeared at about 9 p.m. It was dead quiet in the village. I felt like I was the only one awake. Then the dogs started to bark angrily. And then I heard splashes in the water. Very loud splashes. I was terrified, so I went to bed. The next morning, one of our relatives came to tell me that Daniel had gone missing. Despite repeated attempts to find his body, all that was ever found of Daniel was his boat and his hat. This picture is the only memory we have of Daniel because just before he was killed, his house burned down and everything he owned was destroyed. This was Daniel's house, but it burnt down. He was building another one when he went missing. Daniel's family lost a provider and a much-loved father and son. Of course I miss him. He's my son. 
Perhaps it was fate. He was a fisherman, and maybe this is a fisherman's fate. The fate of Daniel's killer is also sealed. The government in Manila has finally issued a permit to hunt down the rogue crocodile. As long as it's taken alive, there's only one man for the job. Croc legend Ronnie Sumiller has been hunting nuisance crocodiles for 20 years. This will be his most dangerous mission yet. More crocodile than we expected. Okay, me. Ronnie sets more traps. For the villagers, it's a terrifying wait. They find trap after trap in shreds. The croc must be huge. Three weeks later, a trap finally holds. <laughs> This time, they've got it. Several dozen men strain at the tug of war with a powerful crocodile at the end of their line. The beast is so heavy and so powerful that it takes several hours to haul it in. It's clearly no ordinary crocodile. But it's only when they finally land that they realize exactly what they're up against. It's immense. Sixty people work all night to drag the beast a kilometer and a half back to the village. It's over a ton of muscle, power, and killer instinct. As word spreads that they've caught the killer, more and more jubilant onlookers flock to the creek. Everyone wants to get close to the enormous animal now that he's tied down. There's plenty of fight left in the crop. For a moment, everyone's heart stands still. The ropes only just hold. But the hard part is yet to come. They have to transport the enormous reptile 11 kilometers to a purpose-built tourist park at Consuelo, near the main road. The problem is, the road to the park is on the other side of the creek. And the only bridge is far too rickety and narrow. They have to transfer the killer crocodile to a makeshift pontoon and float it across. Finally, after they struggle for 24 hours, victory. party goes on deep into the night. Morning finds the monster the star attraction at the Echo Park. Its pond was initially going to be a swimming pool for children. It's clearly a male. He weighs more than 1,040 kilos. Female salties rarely exceed 160 kilos and grow no more than four meters. 
This guy looks to be over six. They call him Lolong. Lolong could get them into the Guinness Book of Records. They finally get a good look at him, but the villagers have second thoughts about whether this is the killer croc. That's not the right one, is it? No, it's too small. In the cold light of day, they Roy Dagas, who was with Rowena when she died, is certain that this is not the croc he saw that night. It's too late to prove Lalong killed Rowena two years ago. But Daniel Oxtero has only been missing a few months. Could his remains still be inside Lalong's stomach? Crocodiles swallow large chunks of prey, bones and all, without chewing. They have the strongest stomach acid of any animal. Flesh will be dissolved in days, bones in a matter of weeks. But they can't digest anything made of keratin. So horns or human hair and fingernails can remain inside the croc for months. It's a long shot, but the people are desperate for answers. They can't slice him open. The next best thing is to pump his stomach. As soon as news of the capture breaks, Ronnie rushes back to the village to look for proof. He inserts a length of plastic tube down the croc's gullet. Then he pours bucket after bucket of water into it until the croc vomits violently. Ronnie doesn't find any human remains. The stomach pumping is inconclusive. It's possible they didn't get everything out or that Lolong had coughed up a hairball before they caught him. It's also possible that another giant crocodile killed Daniel.